winds of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, Thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. When the host of hell ascends, and my strength begins to fail, I know you never lost a battle. Stand by me. Stand by me, Lord. Stand by me. Lord, you know Stand by me when my foes in battle array, then undertake to stop my way. I know you save both Paul and Silas, so stand by me. You know, God is good, worthy of our praises. You know, I don't claim to be no preacher or anything like that, but, you know, I can only do what the Lord will have me to do. And, you know, that was a fault of mine when I first started out for the Lord. I always try to prepare myself to somebody else. But you know what? We can only do what God will have us to do. You know, I told uh, Brother Keenan there a couple weeks ago in Sunday school, I said, don't compare yourself. You can't be like your dad. You can't be like me. You can't be like your uncle. But you can only be what God will have you to do. And you know, uh, my words today, I just want to read a few scriptures. I don't want to take long. Is encouragement. You know, the church needs encouragement, Brother Glenn. You know, a lot of people, you hear the testimonies throughout the church, how the church is pressed down. People going through the storms of their life with their children, with their families, with their co-workers. But I'm here to tell you, you can make it. Amen. No matter what's before you, you can make it tonight. Amen. And I want you to look at the person next to you and shake their hand and say, you can make it. But you know what? That's a promise of God. We can make it. Yes. I'd like to read in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, if everybody would get that. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But, that, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, it says wait upon the Lord. You know, we've got a lot of things to do before the Lord comes, Brother Jim. And I don't just mean sitting there on your seat. I mean, we've got to pray. We've got to seek the Lord. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. You know, the devil will try to put fear upon you. Uh -huh. 
He'll try to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. But you know, the verse says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. But Deuteronomy 31 and 6, it says, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. It says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with his people into the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord he is that doeth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Ain't you glad you have a friend in the Lord? You know, that song we sung this morning, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, he's truly the best friend I've ever had. You know, this world will let you down. Brother Jim, the things of this world. But you know what? God will always be there. And you know, there's been times in my life that I didn't think I was going to make it. But the Lord was always there to help me through it. You know, I love him tonight. I want to be, I want to do what the Lord will have. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. It says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Whithsoever thou goest. You know, we see the things coming up on this world, Brother Glenn. It's got people dismayed. Their hearts faint. Yeah. But you know what? We can't let those things get in our way of serving the Lord. You know, me and uh, went to the ball game last night. And they were saying how many people were there. The record crowd is over 10,000 people. And you know, during the ball game, I, just, I was just kind of looking around at the people. And I was thinking to myself, how many people here is serving the Lord? Amen. And you know what? I, I don't think there would be too many, Brother Glenn. I mean, you look around, you see how people dress and how people act. They don't think of the day of the Lord, Brother Glenn, is up, or Brother Jim is up on us. But my heart is, is really heavy for those people. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 55. And verse 17. Psalms 55 verse 17. It says evening and morning and at noon. Will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. You know, we're living in a world there's no fear of the Lord in the world we're living in today. It says, He hath put forth His hands against such as be at peace with Him. He hath broken His covenant. The words of His mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in His heart. His words were softer than oil that were drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out their half their days, but I will trust in thee. There's one other place I want to read here. I'll get out of the way here. Psalms chapter 3. Psalms 
Psalms chapter 3, verse 1. It says, A song of David when he fled from Absalom his son. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand people that have set themselves against me around about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for that for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, thy blessing is upon his people. You know, I love the Lord. I want to be an encourager to people. You know, when I first started out with the Lord, She's not here anymore, but old Miss Stapleton, she would always meet me at the door and she would say, keep on keeping on. Every time church would let out, that's what she would tell me, Brother Glenn, keep on keeping on. And you know, she'd been gone for many years, but you know, I still remember those words of encouragement. But I love the Lord and I just want to encourage each and every one to press forward and do. I know it's hard to serve the Lord a lot of times on your job. I know... Brother Tipton here, he has a struggle with that. I had a struggle with it too, Brother Tipton. But you know what? God will work it out. Yes. You know, I had this supervisor that a lot younger than me, and I've testified this many times. He'd come in and just nitpick at different old things. And after a while, you know, I started not liking my job. I dreaded for him to come in. And, uh, you know, and, and at, but at the time, you know, I, I started having bad feelings toward this person. And I knew that's not what God wanted me to have. So, then, you know, I called the called him up and I said, you know, I'd like to meet with you. And uh, I called him and we had met at one of the stores. And I said, you know, I said, I'm trying to live my life for the Lord. And I said, he's not been too happy with the way I've been treating you. You know, when someone... You know, just always at you, always at you. You know, that's kind of like stayed away and just, you know, not want to be around them. And that's kind of what I've done, you know, kind of give him a cold shoulder, if you will. But you know what, God, that, that's not what God wanted me to do. But I, I told him, I said, I'm trying to live my life for the Lord and God hasn't been pleased with the way I've treated you. And I said, I wanted to tell you I'm sorry. And, you know, he, he began to cry. He said, I appreciate that. He said, and you know, I may not have been the nicest person to you either. And I'm, I'm sorry as well. But you know, God's got a way of working things out. Amen. But sometimes we've got to humble ourselves, Brother Glenn. And this old flesh don't want to humble. Don't want to be humble. But that's something that I need to work on myself. Just keep me in your prayers. I want to be and I want to do what the Lord will have. Amen.